Hello guys, this is David and welcome to BTEC. Now I think this year we're going to see a lot of smartphone cameras with ultra high megapixel counts on their rear facing cameras. And although there's still rumours, Sony is supposed to be dropping a 52 megapixel sensor into the Sony Xperia XZ4. And of course there's the P30 Pro, but also Nokia with its Nokia 9 Pure View and the five camera sensors on the back of that phone. One of those is bound to be an ultra high megapixel camera. Now, as I said, these are still rumors, but we will find out later on this month at MWC in Barcelona. But if you can't wait that long and you wanna get your hands on something with a big megapixel count right now, then you have choices. There is the Mate 20 Pro, or you can choose the Honor View 20. Now the Honor View 20 has a 48 megapixel main sensor, which is backed up by a 3D time of flight sensor. This is compared to the 40 megapixel main, 20 megapixel ultra wide and eight megapixel telephoto lenses on the Mate 20 Pro. Now the time of flight sensor isn't really a camera sensor. It's more there just to gauge distances to help with its portrait mode and aperture modes. But it can also help out with augmented reality games. So you could say that the V20 really only has one rear facing camera, but it should give better depth of field shots than the Mate 20 Pro. And for less than half the price, the V20 costs 499 pounds. And this is compared to 1049 pounds for the Mate 20 Pro. Now this is a massive difference in price. So I feel like a lot of people out there who are thinking of buying these phones for their photography capabilities will be wondering, is it actually worth spending the extra cash to get the Mate 20 Pro? Or is the smart money with the View 20? Well, let's get these two side by side and find out. But before we get going, let me just give a big shout out to Direct Mobiles for looking after us here at BTEC and just being a great place to go if you're looking for a good deal on your next phone. They have over 24 years of award-winning customer service and now have comparison tools, so you're bound to find the right phone for you. Check down in the video description below for a link to their deals or search directmobiles.co.uk. So here we go, View 20 versus Mate 20 Pro. View 20 is on the left and we'll have the Mate 20 Pro on the right. And straight away, I can see that these are two very different camera sensors. A much cooler tone to the View 20, almost a green tone and much warmer colors on the Mate 20 Pro. One thing that might make all the difference in this comparison is the fact that the Mate 20 Pro is using Leica lenses. Leica are one of the most prestigious camera and lens manufacturers in the world. I use Leica glass on my GH5, but their lenses are expensive. And when I did eventually save up enough money to get my first Leica lens, well, it was a bit of a penny drop moment. I was amazed at the quality compared to what I was using before. I find that Leica lenses give a sort of organic tone to the images. It's really hard to explain, but compared to non-pro lenses, they really are head and shoulders above. And in some shots, to me at least, I can see where the lenses give the Mate 20 Pro an advantage. Another big advantage the Mate 20 Pro has is quite an obvious one. And that's the fact that there are four lenses on the back, which gives it the ability to optically zoom, as well as having that ultra wide angle lens. But another less obvious advantage is the macro abilities of the Mate 20 Pro. Its closest focusing distance is around about two centimeters. The View 20 is a little bit disappointing in this regard as it can only manage a close focusing distance of about 10 centimeters and there's no optical zoom either. The View 20 can digitally zoom however and having such a high megapixel count means that it can zoom in quite a decent amount without any noticeable loss of quality to the image. So what about that 3D time flight sensor? Does it give better portrait shots than the Mate 20 Pro? Well, Yes and no, if there is such a thing. I find that it does give better accuracy over previous Honor devices and pretty much anything that uses a traditional low megapixel depth sensor. However, I just prefer the look of the images from the Mate 20 Pro. This shot is quite clear to see how much more blurry the background gets with the Mate 20 Pro, even though they have both of their simulated apertures set to 0.95. Now I find this a little bit strange because if it's supposed to be simulating a real aperture, you would think that the blurriness of the background would be the same. But I guess this is Honor versus Huawei. I mean, this is the same company. I don't think you'll ever find Huawei produce an Honor phone that is better than one of their flagships. I sometimes think that they must actually have to put a lot of time, effort and money into making a phone that's not as good as a phone that they already have. The video is shot at up to 4K and at 30 frames per second on both devices. And they seem to have the exact same stabilization capabilities as well which unfortunately, even on the Mate series, isn't very good at all. There is a lot of jelly effect that goes on, especially when the lights get low. If you've seen my earlier videos about the Mate 20 Pro, then you'll know that I do complain about the low light performance and how messy the stabilizer can be. And unfortunately, it's exactly the same with the Honor. 
in good light, the stabilizer is actually one of the best you can get. It's perfectly smooth, but that's if you're being careful with it. Any sudden movements and you do get that kind of jelly effect going on. And at night, well, just forget about it. These two shots were taken at 40 and 48 megapixels respectively. You can see there's incredible amounts of detail. I can crop right into the image and you can still get a perfectly usable shot. Again, I think though it comes down to the lens and I prefer the look of the Mate 20 Pro. For the front cameras, we're looking at a 25 megapixel sensor on the View 20 and a 24 megapixel sensor on the Mate 20 Pro, but they still have that same Huawei sort of warm look to them, which is heavy on the beautifying effects. Although surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, I still prefer the look of the Mate 20 Pro. It clearly has a higher dynamic range as well, as you can see here, but I've never really been a fan of Huawei front cameras on any device, even the Mate 20 Pro. And unfortunately, the View 20 hasn't changed my mind about that. The stabilization on the front camera is there, but unfortunately it seems to be the same stuff that's on the back. So you do get that jelly effect as soon as the lights get even a little bit low. One slightly annoying thing about the View 20 is that aperture mode is under the more tab. Aperture mode is used if you want to simulate your aperture between f.95 and f16, and it allows you to shoot video also with this simulated aperture. Now, if you know my videos, then you know I like a bit of background blur. So I like to have access to the aperture mode. But other than that little anomaly of the aperture mode being in the wrong place, the camera apps are pretty much exactly the same. You still get the 960 frame per second super slow motion function that you see in the flagship Huawei devices, which to me is, seems more like it's a simulated super slow motion and not the real deal like you see in the Sony and Samsung devices. If you want to know more about that, I've done some specific videos about the super slow motion on the P20 and the Mate 20 Pro, and they're pretty much the same, seemingly using software to simulate the slow motion. But go and check it out for yourselves. So to conclude, despite the new technology that's inside the View 20, it's still a case of you pay for what you get. But having said that, you do get a hell of a lot with the View 20. The 48 megapixel shots have so much detail in them. And this phone really is something to think about if you were thinking of buying a Mate 20 Pro. I mean, a Mate 20 Pro is over a thousand pounds. For that money, you can actually buy yourself a full frame DSLR. Something like an A7 Mark II isn't much more than a Mate 20 Pro at the moment. And even something like a Nikon D610 is actually way less than a grand, leaving you some money to buy a lens. Overall, Especially considering the price, I think that the Honor View 20 does very well against the best smartphone camera on the market to date. And for people who wouldn't dream of spending over a thousand pounds on a phone, but still want a really good smartphone camera, then there is the Honor View 20. Anyway, that's it from me. Thanks for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed my comparison. For more videos like this and a few more surprises coming up very soon, then make sure you hit the subscribe button, double tap notifications and smash the like button for me. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook if you want to know what's coming up on BTECT. And I'll see you soon. I'm David, and this is BTECT.